This is <laughs> phenomenal. And James, Sam and Zoe join us now. My goodness, welcome. Welcome. This is a lovely gang of friends we have yeah, tonight. Happy to be here. Very New friends. Nice. Yeah. Yes. So, James, I'll start with you. The first film was set in 2154 and it was about humans exploring Pandora. Exploiting Where, Pandora. Exploiting. Yeah. Where does the story pick up then? We pick up uh, 15 years later and as, as you know, Sam and Zoe played uh, the young lovers of the first film. They're now the old married couple, not that old, but older <laughs> 15 years later with teenage kids. Yes. So that's where the story really swerves in the in the new film. And it's very much about being parents of teenagers, very much about being teenagers in a family, the sibling tensions, the tensions between fathers and sons, mothers and daughters, that, that sort of thing. I think that's the, kind of the... Yeah, it's family, isn't it's it? Family, yeah, very yeah. family based. Yeah. So, Sam, your characters fell in love in the first film, but in this film you've got new responsibilities. Yeah. Children. Yeah. Oh dear. Yeah, but they're still look, they're still fierce warriors. Yeah. And it is that, you know, that's the dilemma of how do you balance running headlong into battle against being dad and mum. Yeah. And yeah. then what what you have to do to protect that love and protect your family. And so there's yeah. a, there's a lot of that. Yeah. It's very emotional. <laughs> I mean, you as a mum, oh right? my goodness, I was in yeah. pieces. We won't reveal anything, but yes, it's very emotional. But to, it's a feast to watch. I mean, the underwater scenes, Dawn, yeah. you've got to see it to believe it. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Where do we start, James, unpacking how you make this? Do we have 30 hours or so? <laughs> I can give you a brief <laughs> overview in minutes. that time. Uh, well, look, it's a very complicated way to make a film, but the object of all that technology and all that behind the scenes is to create a seamless experience for the audience that's mm -hmm. transportive. So ideally, one doesn't even question it after a while. It's just a kind of a dream state, right? So you feel like you're there on Pandora, underwater or above water, out in the Pandora and ocean, meeting these new cultures, you know, and going on the journey of our, of our characters. And I think... Ideally, all that sort of works together and maybe even heightens the emotion. It is, you know? and you're so with the characters, you feel nearly breathless at the beginning because it's, it's so much of it is underwater. You feel, oh, God, I couldn't get my breath. Yeah, <laughs> OK. Which is ridiculous. Good. But I suppose that's what good, you're going good. for. Yeah, absolutely. Zoe, what was it like to film underwater uh, for so long? Um, you know, going into it, it was quite daunting, mm. but uh, Jim presents a challenge and he mm. leads the way. So if he's not backing out, you kind of have to step it up. <laughs> and um, if, if, if I had any reference from the first movie, you know, you surrounded us with all these resources mm. and all we had to do was learn, you mm. know? Uh, so we, we applied that same kind of technique for the second movie. We trained with these amazing free divers that you know he surrounded us with. And I went from like thinking that that was completely impossible for me to obtain to holding my breath close to you know five, five minutes and like a quarter and, and just wanting to cry because it, the, the level of confidence that you feel from that experience is unlike anything I had ever felt in my life. And I've, I'm still able to carry it now, yeah. just like archery and you know, horseback riding without a Skills. saddle, you know, those Skills. sort of things. And, and riding a flying creature and all Absolutely. the things you had to learn for the first yeah. time. Yeah. yeah. What about you, Sam? Because you said you found it particularly hard. Yeah, I can hold my water. breath. For, I did it for easily 15 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> he did. I can attest to that. I was there. I was there. <laughs> Natural. My goodness. Yeah, it's, it's so, yeah. I mean, you have to see it to believe it, basically. Um, but, James, some of the biggest films... Um, that you've made have come from dreams. Is yeah. that right? The yeah. Avatar. Terminator, dreams, Avatar. You know, um, I just think the dreams are my own private streaming service that runs every night for free. <laughs> right? Actually, well, makes you a lot of money, these yeah. dreams. I would, yeah, but it's all inter it's cryptocurrency in my own hands, right. so I don't really <laughs> get much, you know, from it. Uh, but yeah, no, I guess I do a lot of work in my dreams and, and I, I see a lot of imagery. Sometimes I get up and write it down. Sometimes uh, some of the stuff for Avatar, when I was in college, I, I jumped up and, and did paintings. And Gosh, so that, 
I mean, not, that's quite a while ago. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this has been going on for a while, right? And, and I, I've always had dreams of being underwater with amazing animals swimming around and that sort of thing. So it's just kind of working all that subconscious imagery out. I mean, I think we all are screenwriters in our heads every night. We're all yeah. telling ourselves stories. One part of our brain is putting on a show for the other part of the brain. Mm -hmm. I think screenwriters just figure out a way to formalize that and get it out onto the paper.